Hi, I'm Connor O'Malley, and today I'd like to present a lecture on a passion of mine, trout. Various species of trout are iconic of North America and freshwater lakes, rivers, and streams throughout much of the world. They are a member of the salmonid family, a bony fish, and are popular amongst anglers worldwide. As urbanization increases, the high oxygen, clear water habitats that these fish thrive and reproduce in are destroyed. Therefore, captive breeding and reproduction is necessary to support and maintain healthy levels of fish populations throughout my To begin my lecture on trout, I'd like to start by discussing some of the anatomy and physiology of the animal. I'll start by discussing the external anatomy and then move on to the internal. This diagram features the anatomy external of an adult male rainbow trout. The animal gets its name from the lateral line which extends down the dorsal plane of the animal. This lateral line is used in many different species and to determine by color the, the different species when catching fish. At the anterior end of the animal, or rostral end of the head, we see the nares or nostrils, the mouth and eye. The jaw of a trout in males forms a kipe, a large hook-like structure, which each successive spawn, we will see this kipe grow larger and develop teeth. The larger the kipe, generally the more dominant the animal. This is Darwinism at work. The kipe is used to nip and bite at other males during spawning so that they won't be able to mate with females. Posterior on the head, we have the opercolum and the bronchiostegal rays. The opercolum is a bony structure which protects the gills. It's essentially a plate. The bronchiostegal rays are made up connective tissue. They're a membranous support structure which help open and close the opercolum during respiration. The pectoral fin, pelvic fin, anal fin, dorsal and adipose fin are all used for stability and support and balance during swimming. The vent directly anterior to the anal fin on the ventral side of the animal houses both the urogenital tract and the anus. At the most posterior end of the animal, we have the peduncle and caudal fin. The peduncle translates to a stem and is a very muscular structure, helping the caudal fin power through swift rivers and raging currents. That sums up the external anatomy of a trout. What we have here is a diagram showing the internal anatomy of fish, or in this case, a trout. Now a lot of the organs we see here are comparable to the ones that we've discussed in mammals and humans, but I would like to go over some of the ones that are specific to fish, aiding trout to operate in clear water rapids and swift rivers. <clears throat> here we also see a better view of a kipe in male trout. You see this hook structure? Now in females that isn't present, but in males it does grow larger and larger each year. <clears throat> Some